The picture-in-picture -in, -picture in Empire Earth 2 lets you see different areas of the battlefield all at once. So you can have your main view doing whatever you would normally be doing, but you can also bookmark the picture-in-picture -picture window to cycle through up to six different locations or units. So I'll frequently bookmark my main base, bookmark my second or third territory. I'll also bookmark one of my spies and a few of my combat units. And as I'm managing my army or managing my base, the game will cycle the picture-in-picture -picture window through each of these locations or units that I've selected ahead of time. This lets me see what's going on all over the map without having to rely on just some little audio ping that says your base is under attack. Now you can actually see what's happening without taking your attention away from what you're doing. The War Planner in Empire Earth 2 is one of my favorite features. I've played a lot of multiplayer games recently, and I've found that any time I send a War Plan over to people, we win the game. The War Planner basically lets you draw out using arrows and X's and O's and text what you want players on your team to do. So I can send a War Plan over to somebody and say, I'm going to come in from the south, you're going to come in from the north, uh, and Bob is going to come in from the east, but I'll go first, then you go second, then you go third. Now, in a normal RTS game, you use your chat window to try to coordinate all of this, and it very rarely works out. But with the War Planner in Empire Earth 2, you actually see a map of the entire world, you see where the arrows are, and I have found that people follow these to a T, and it makes coordinating teammates so much easier than it's ever been done before. The feature I use most often in Empire Earth 2 is a citizen manager, which is a screen you can pull up that shows you how many of each of your citizens are harvesting each sort of resource at a given point in time. In most RTS games, it's easy enough in the early times in the game to grab your few citizens, have them harvest resources. But when the game progresses and you have dozens or even hundreds of citizens, it's much more difficult to stay strategic and use good common sense when you're allocating citizens to your tasks. The citizen manager lets you manage big empires. It keeps all of the strategy of how many citizens are harvesting each type of resource, but removes the tedium of it. You can very simply see that you have 10 guys harvesting gold, uh, left click to pull three of them off, and then right click to drop those three on wood. So you have instant control over what resources are coming into your empire. I found that in a lot of real-time strategy games, I spend a lot of time at the end of the game looking at the stat screens. Did I kill more units than the other guy did? Did I harvest more resources? But it doesn't really impact the way you play the game. In Empire Earth 2, we decided to implement a system we call the Crown System. What this does it tra is track how well you're doing militarily, economically, or imperially, and it rewards you by giving you a crown if you're at the top of the heap, militarily, or economically, or imperially. Only one player can hold a given crown at any given point in time, and when you get that crown, you get a leader unit who can help your other units in the game. You also get certain powers that you can choose from. So if I win the military crown, I'll get a military leader who can enhance the capabilities and strength of military units he's nearby. And I can also choose from maybe up to a dozen different powers. I could choose to enhance my infantry. I could choose to enhance my artillery units. If I won the economic crown, I could do things such as choose immigration as a power which has units come into my cities at random intervals uh, for free. It, I could also choose economic powers that reduce the cost of buying new units or increase the rate at which I harvest things. The imperial crown you get for taking more territories and establishing trade routes and treaties, and that can give you advantages in trading. It can, you can choose powers that make it easier to take and hold territories. It's basically a reward or playing in a particular way, and it's an incentive to play the game in different styles. Rated T for Teen.